Hi, welcome back. I've just bought myself a high quality VFD from Amazon. I'll take you through how to connect it and how to set it up. So this is my uh, Kerry Super 8 benchtop drill. So when I got this, it didn't have any kind of drive with it. It just had a three phase motor, nothing else. So uh, the very first thing I did was I used a couple of big capacitors to shift the phases um, from the single phase and that will make a, uh, a three phase motor run. Um, just not very well uh, it kind of worked had very little torque though so it wasn't a whole lot better than the old uh, clark metal worker at the time this was probably eight nine years ago looked at the price of vfds and I, they were all sort of 150 plus pounds and i thought i can do that cheaper so i built my own which um might have seen briefly on previous videos um consisted of a, a microcontroller um on a home brew circuit board um, and a, a power stage which was a a module which I bought which has got all the, the um, power transistors in it sorry about the crappy focus um, and then you know the rest of it was just sort of uh, filtering and um, all the other necessary bits and bobs to make it go um, loads of fun with noise making it work so ended up putting a a screen between the control electronics and the power electronics um, which did the job and it, it it worked fairly well for quite a while um, but it, it finally died a few weeks ago so I decided to have a look on Amazon see what was available and I spotted this one for uh, something in the region of uh, 21 pounds I think unfortunately I think that must have been a mistake because I the listing that this was under now lists something that's a hundred pounds, um, and similar ones range that you know look the same, range from sort of fifty-ish up to one hundred and fifty. So I don't know. I think I got lucky there, uh, but it works. Let's go through how to wire it up. So obviously, when you're looking for these, it should be a single phase input. So obviously, that just connects up to the mains. I've got that going through um, this box at the front with the e-stop on it. The rest of the um, NVR circuit um, is hooked up down here. This looks like mains, but it's not. It's just because I had a bit of mains cable. Um, this is just the the on-off control. Um, and then that wire goes to the speed potentiometer, which is also on the front here. So finally, you've got... UVW underneath which are the three um, phase wires for the for the motor. I've got the motor screen uh, so this cable screened um, it's so short it, you could probably get away without screened cable but I screened it anyway the screen and the earth which connects to the motor frame are all connected to a common earth underneath here somewhere there so maybe wondering why I've not got a connection from this earth back to the common point. It's because the mains comes in through this white cable up into the switch box at the front. That's earthed and that's obviously connected to the frame of the um, machine. Uh, and then the motor's connected back to the frame of the machine. So there is a common earth point um, basically at the input um, of the system. This is just hanging off the the end so uh, that earth there is connected to here so when you get the manual um, it all looks relatively straightforward got a sort of simple wiring diagram a few things about inputs and outputs um, this here is the um, the pin out of the, the little green terminal block here for the different function pins to make it go and so on um, so that's fairly straightforward but then you get a little bit further on into the um, uh, configuration and then there's pages and pages of setup um, options which just go on forever um, fortunately although there appears to be an infinite number of settings there's only a few that you actually need to set up um, and i will just have a quick look at those now so the first really important thing you need to do is take a look at the uh, spec plate on your motor um, and note down the critical information excuse my finger um, so 
this is obviously a half horsepower motor it's got 1425 rpm rating 380 volts max 0.95 amps um, and 50 hertz so there's like i said there's something like an infinite number of um, settings available in the uh, in the manual so i skipped over the first few um, until i got to something that i had a vague idea of what to do with Here we are so p1 uh, zero zero motor type selection common asynchronous motor and that's what you want for a, a regular three-phase induction motor like this um, I imagine a permanent magnet synchronous motor is something like a brushless DC or equivalent AC with uh, actual magnets in but these these don't uh, rated motor power so that we've got the power off the um, off the nameplate there uh, the spec plate uh, rated motor voltage again written down motor motor current frequency um, maximum speed um, so yeah those those settings um, we can set up so if I okay so that's powered up this flashing number is actually the frequency I don't think that, does that still work no that doesn't work I've disabled that because I've linked it to the front so I mean, I can adjust from zero, and I've capped it out at 60 hertz, so it can go just over full speed. The problem with these motors is they are designed for 50 hertz, or if you're in America, probably 60. You can probably push them to 100, but they will get hotter. Um, uh, so far, that seems to be absolutely fine. It's running really nicely, um, so I'm going to leave it at that. Um, okay, so to do the um, the setting. Uh, you press this prog button as it says P0 settings we were interested in were P1 so press the up so it says P1 and um, we press enter P100 which was the uh, motor type if you press enter it shows zero happy with that so we go to the next one oh, oh, 02 oh, oh, 01 sorry now that yeah this now this is in kilowatts rated motor power 0000.5 it's 500 watt motor that's fine all right automatically increments to the next number when you uh, jump out uh, 380 volts for the rated motor voltage 03 rated motor current set at an amp rather than 0.95 but close enough 04 50 Hertz is obviously the motors max frequency and finally 05 1425 was the max rpm so they're the basic settings to get the motor turning so once you've done that you can connect up your motor and press or exit from the programming bit by pressing prog press prog twice comes back out and then you can press run i can't because it's on the uh, i'm just going to drop the speed a bit because it's a bit vicious So the next thing to set up, which is under the P0 setting, is this acceleration time and deceleration time. So that just basically sets the amount of time it takes the motor to spin up to full speed that you set it to and spin back down again. Now, there is the option of a braking resistor to fit on here, which is these two terminals here. It didn't come with a braking resistor. I'm not surprised for the amount I paid. Um, but it appears I don't need it. There's enough loss in the system that as long as this ramps down at a, you know, I think I've got it to a set to a second or something, um, it seems to seems to work fine. Um, perhaps with a permanent magnet motor, you do need that resistor because you've got um, you've got those permanent magnets. It's effectively acting as a generator when it's spinning down. Whereas these, as soon as you remove the um, the field current. Um, there's very little um, back EMF. So those settings, um, really, it's just a matter of personal preference um, and a bit of fiddling around. You set them exactly the same way, just go into PROG, select the, the, the appropriate P number, in this case P0, find the, use the up and down arrow keys, these ones to, to find the appropriate number, 
and then just set the uh, the time that you want it to take in seconds. So just have a quick look. Uh, prog p naught enter seventeen one and a half seconds spin up time. Enter p eighteen, which is the deceleration time, one second. So that's that's what I've got mine set to. So then the only other thing that I did to this was to set the um, speed and uh, on-off control to be external. Um, so they're around the front on this control box. You don't have to. It's got a run and stop button and a twiddly knob that could have easily gone on the front. Now there's there's hundreds and hundreds more settings which you basically don't have to play with. I'm sure there's things that could be um, fiddled with to optimize it, but this seems to work pretty well. All right, so there we are. My drill's now working again. Um, I want to just want to say thank you to all the new subscribers. Um, I've had an incredible amount of new subscribers. I've now just um, smashed through the 200 mark, which is nothing compared to some, but to me it's to me it's quite a lot. So yeah, thanks everybody. Um, thank you for watching this video. If you've watched this far, um, any questions, please ask. Um, I'm sure there's tons of things I haven't covered which might be of interest regarding setting this sort of thing up um, so yeah ask away and uh, I'll see you next time